guys, welcome back to my channel. Now I'm really excited for this tutorial because I'm going to be trying a new technique of cake wrapping with some edible prints. So as you can see here, I have some edible prints. So this isn't wafer paper. Wafer paper tends to break very easily and when it gets wet, it starts to curl. This is almost like extremely thin fondant, which has been printed on with edible prints. Now I've got a link below for a discount as well if you are interested in buying ready printed sheets. But there are plenty of websites, depending on where you're based, where you can send off custom designs for them to be printed. So I've got this tropical flamingo leafy print, um, but I'm going to put it to one side because I'm obviously not gonna use it just yet. Of course, I need to start off with preparing my cake. So I've got my six inch vanilla cake here, ready baked, and I'm going to soak it with my simple sugar syrup. And I like soaking it at this stage rather than when I'm building up the cake, just so all the soaking's done, all the crumbs go out the way. It's just a little bit more organized this way. And now what I'm going to do is stack them in the order I'm going to build up the layers in. So I have one of the bases here, so that's gonna be at the bottom. And then the two center pieces. And then the last base here, which will go on top. And once again, it just makes it a lot easier when it comes to stacking. Now, you can see I don't have a turntable in front of me, nor a cake board, because I'm gonna show you a little trick how to get extremely straight edges. Now, because the edible print doesn't require a lot of buttercream on the outside, usually buttercream is where you can kind of hide if the cake is a little bit slanted, or if there are any mishaps when you're building it up. Um, so you want to actually build it up as straight as possible. So here's a little trick. I have the cake tin that I baked the cakes in and I've got some acetate already in. So these are strips of acetate. I collect these off the back of the printed sheets, for example. You can also buy ready rolls of acetate, but you can also use baking paper if you don't have either. So I've got some acetate here and I'm going to place it inside the tin like this. And this is going to act as a wall when I'm building up the cake. So I've got my first layer of cake. So the crumb side, I want facing down because I want the center of the cake to be crumb free. And this is gonna go straight inside the tin. So it's gonna fit nice and snug in there, of course, because I baked it in here. So it's important to use the same tin that you baked the cakes in. And then I've got my Swiss meringue buttercream already made. If you haven't already, then check out my tutorial on how to make my beautiful Swiss meringue buttercream and how to keep it white, no white color needed. And I've got it in a piping bag because it's just that bit easier to fill this with. So I'm going to start by piping a ring around the outside of the cake and make sure it's touching the acetate like this. So it's really nice and pressed against the acetate because again, that's gonna help with the straightness of the cake. And now I'm going to fill the remaining layer with the buttercream like this. So don't worry too much if it's not a perfect circle or if there's a couple of gaps because I'm going to get the next layer of cake, which is one of the centerpieces and place it on top of that buttercream. And then I'm gonna press it down a little bit. And this pressing down is going to squash down the buttercream. So if there are any gaps inside, it's going to spread out. And repeat with the ring of buttercream around the outside. So you can either pipe how I'm doing like this, or you can hold the piping bag still and rotate the cake tin. Some people find this way easier. Next layer of cake goes on. Press it firmly down, especially in the middle, don't forget. And then the final layer of buttercream. So press against the acetate. And then fill in the middle. So with the last layer of cake, make sure the crumb side is facing upwards and it's going to go on top of that layer of buttercream and make sure it's nice and level. So you can see what's happening here. The buttercream is pressing against the acetate, which means the cake is straight because these walls of acetate are just an extension of the straight cake tin. So this cake is gonna go in the freezer for about 15 minutes to completely firm up. And then once it's done that, I'm going to out turn it. So you want it to be extremely cold. If you don't have space in your freezer, you can of course put it in your fridge, 
for about half an hour. Just make sure the buttercream is completely solid before the next stage. So my cake is completely solid. I can feel that the buttercream has completely set, which means it's time to out tan the cake. Now, if the acetate is the same height as the cake, you can just flip it. But in my case, the acetate is higher, so I need to basically hold the cake. So it can be a little bit tricky, but just to prepare, I'm going to put some buttercream on my board. Well, I'm actually using an acrylic disc today, um, but that's gonna secure the cake. So you want that there already. So I'm just going to pipe just a little bit onto the surface and then I'm going to flip my cake and kind of catch it in my hand and remove the tin and quickly flip it back and I can set the cake down onto the board and then remove the acetate and because it's cold enough the buttercream isn't affected at all. So you can see what a straight cake that is. So what the freezer actually does, it kind of encases the crumbs as well. So if you wanted to, you can put a very thick layer of buttercream on this and it's enough for the second coating. So this freezer technique kind of acts as the crumb coating anyway, but of course, if you wanna play it safe, you can then finish off the crumb coating. It's just another step in decorating your cake, but it does achieve really straight sides and it's great if you are new to cake decorating too. So what I'm going to do now is apply another layer of buttercream all over the cake like I would do for a crumb coat but I do want it a little bit thicker otherwise the bumps of the cake may show through when I apply the paper on so I'm going to pipe on some more buttercream and I'm just going to smooth out the top and I'm using my turntable and palette knife at the same time and then keeping my palette knife still, I'm achieving this flat top. And then I'll work around the sides. Now because the cake's been in the freezer, your buttercream may harden. So you don't wanna put the buttercream on and then wait ages before you spread it because it can start to set. So it's quite a generous layer I'm putting on. Like I said, more than what I would do for a crumb coat because I want a really smooth surface. As usual, before scraping, I'm just going to flatten off the top once again. Make sure I'm pushing that buttercream kind of over the edges, and that's how you get those packed in sharp corners too. And then I can start scraping. Now I don't want to scrape off as much as possible, I just want to get a smooth outer coating because the next stage is going to apply my sugar paper. So as always, I'm focusing the pressure of the scraper at the bottom of the cake. And you can see I'm not actually scraping off too much and I've also maintained the straight edges of the cake. But what I'm going to do is fill in a couple of these holes because I like this thickness. It's a good thickness for the sugar paper. I'm just going to take the excess and fill over the holes and then scrape again. So I'm just gonna do one long smooth scrape around the outside to finish this layer off. And then I'm gonna clean off the corners like usual from the outside in and scraping the excess buttercream on my scraper every time. There, so my perfectly straight half crumb coated cake. Now it's time for the sugar paper. So this is where you're going to have to use your own instinct. If you think the buttercream is a little bit too soft and it's gonna move around a bit when you add the paper, you can put it back in the fridge for five to 10 minutes to firm up. But I felt as I was scraping that because my cake was cold, the buttercream set quite firmly. So I'm gonna go straight on with my paper. So usually the paper comes on and acetates back. And of course, you don't want to apply it this way around because it's faded on the other side. So I'm going to carefully remove the acetate from the back of the sugar paper. If it is feeling a little bit soft, you can put the sugar sheet in the fridge for about five minutes before you do this. But the acetate should come off in one piece. A little bit of the corner rips, but I'm not gonna worry because that is the top corner. And then it's a case of placing onto the cake. Now I obviously want it to be touching the bottom. So I'm gonna focus on the bottom part first and press it against the cake. 
Now you can see it's obviously a lot taller than my cake is, but not to worry. I will show you how to do the top in a minute. Now, of course, you can also see that the paper is only covering half the cake. So if you do want to do a whole cake, I advise you to get two or three sheets of the same pattern and then the same again. And I'll try and line it up as much as possible. So it is a little bit of guesswork of how much paper you need to fit around the cake. But what I do before is get the sheets and just place them around the tin and trim them accordingly. I've actually got an overlap here of a couple of millimeters. But what happens is that the sugar paper does get soft when it touches the buttercream. So it's been on here for a couple of minutes already and it's really sticking onto it and the seam is hardly noticeable. If you obviously have a large overlap, you can just trim off the excess. So I'm now going to show you how to get rid of the top and how to fold the paper inwards. Because obviously if you just push it in, it's going to crumple up. So I've got some scissors and what I'm actually going to do is cut strips down the paper until the top of the cake like this. And some of them will collapse in and that's absolutely fine. The best thing about this sugar paper technique is you can literally put any pattern you want onto a cake. What I'm going to do now, like a couple have already done, is fold these pieces in to the middle. So you can see the top is kind of now a pile of these extra pieces. So now I can just trim them a little bit so it flattens out. So another way of decorating the top of a wrapped cake is trimming the paper to the top of the cake here and then getting another piece of the patterned sugar paper and cutting a circle, in this case it would be a six inch circle, and simply place it on top. You do run the risk of getting a seam here though, but you can always cover it up with decorations, which I'm actually going to do here anyway. So if you do have enough sugar paper, that might be an easier way of doing it and it will make sure the top is nice and flat too. I did have a couple of places where the paper actually ripped rather than folded but I'm not going to worry too much because of course there's always the decoration. So what I'm going to do is set this in the fridge because I want the paper to have time to set to the cake and then go on with some decorations. So I'm going to put this in the fridge for about 15 minutes before I finish the cake. So I can feel that the paper is really set to the cake now and all of those overlaps of the paper on top have kind of stuck together. So I'm really happy with the covering. Uh, for the decoration, I thought it would be nice to decorate it with some fresh flowers, keeping within that tropical vibrant theme. But before I do the flowers, I'm going to do a roped pipe border. So what I've got here is I've colored some Swiss meringue buttercream, pink and turquoise of course to keep within the tropical theme and I've also got a piping bag with a number 4B nozzle so these piping tips are also called a French star tip there's just lots of spikes um, and it creates a really nice effect so just before I put it onto the cake I want to prepare my piping bag so I've got a cup here and as usual I'm going to place the piping bag inside and because I want it two tones I'm going to spoon in both colours. So starting with the turquoise, just up one side and then some pink as well. And then squeeze both colours down at the same time so that they'll come out the piping tip together. Like this. So to pipe a roped border you're basically piping a loop around the edge and you're trying to keep the pressure as even as possible. So I'm going to position the piping bag so I'm going to get both colours coming out, start squeezing and go around. So I'm constantly doing this kind of circle action and I'm going on top of what I just piped takes a lot of concentration. Now if you want to stop, I'd advise you stopping at the bottom of one of the circles, reposition your hand, push some more buttercream down so you've got a good grip again and continue where you left off. And just to finish off, I'm going to pipe and finish there. 
And now I'm going to go on with the fresh flowers and just for a change I'm going to do a sort of flower crown coming out of the middle and making it really vibrant rather than just to the side like I usually do. And I'm also going to show you another trick how to prepare fresh flowers for a cake. So as you can see I've got a selection of beautiful fresh flowers. So these aren't edible flowers. If you want to apply flowers to a cake I usually would recommend using edible flowers just because it's easier and you can put them straight onto the cake but if you're not using edible flowers you need to prepare them properly so I will show you the best way how to. I'm basically going to make small clusters and then put them together using flower tape and a toothpick and then all I need to do is insert it into the cake and the only thing that's touching the cake is the toothpick not the flowers like so. So I've got a couple of vibrant ones here and once you've got a small collection like this you can now start with your flower tape. Now I have a video explaining in great detail how to apply flowers to the cake and you may have seen it already and you see me using this. So this feels like it's not sticky at all but as you wrap it round and heat it up with your fingers it gets sticky and binds the flowers together. So I'm going to use this to wrap all of these together and I'm also stretching the tape as well and that also activates its stickiness. And I'm also going to make the stems a little bit shorter. And then I'm going to insert a toothpick into the center of the tape. And then continue the tape down so I cover the ends of the flowers. Like this. And like I said, this just goes straight into the cake, but I'm going to finish the bunches first so I can put them in all together. Okay, so I've got all my flowers prepared and now I'm going to go ahead and place them in the centre of the cake. And the good thing about this border is that it's going to hide where the stem is because I can't push the stem directly into the cake too. So this is a perfect decoration when you want to use fresh flowers. And I'm going to create a sort of bouquet on the top of the cake. And there you go, an extremely tropical take on a sugar paper wrapped cake. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. I can't wait to see your creations because I think they're going to be amazing and every single one is going to be different because it's down to this crazy pattern right here. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out all my other videos showing different techniques of cake decorating as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do try this out, please remember to tag me at George's Cakes on Instagram so I can see them. And in the meantime, I will see you very soon.